Let us pray. Blessed Father, we come to you this morning, a broken people, a scared people, and we turn to you, asking for your guidance in our lives. Thank you for bringing us together this morning as a church, as I read the names of those that are watching. Bless each family that's uh, praising you this morning, Lord. We ask for your presence in our lives. We ask for your guidance. We ask for a cure, Father. We ask that you cure this disease, this virus that, that is uh, uh, attacking the world, Lord, and that we come together, united. Uh, help us to find out what is important in life. Help us to stop uh, dividing with each other, to follow the rules so we can get over this and, and to learn from this, O oh Lord. We thank you and praise you in your son's name. Amen and amen. This is uh, troubling, isn't it? Troubling and challenging and scary time for us all. And I, I have learned so much about me and my faith during this time. And I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed to say that when things are going well, when everything is going right in my life, I, I often neglect God. I often turn to my own ways. I follow my own style, my own instinct. And needless to say, many times that has led me into the wrong path. I find it interesting that during challenging times that like we are all facing right now, that during these times, I hear more from God. I sense God more. I see messages from God more. But if I'm honest, if I really am honest, I really believe that God has been speaking to me the whole time, has always been speaking to me. I just don't listen. I don't listen because my life is busy. I'm too busy enjoying the fruits of God's goodness. I don't take the time to listen to God. I, I keep myself always occupied with things that usually don't matter. And sadly, in my life, it takes hardship and tragedy to get my attention. And I get amazed at how much God has been speaking to me these last few weeks. You know, earlier in the week, I was really struggling with what is the message today. And so I'm praying to God. I'm like, God, give me a message. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. And, and then out of the blue, I get a message from a friend of mine about a sermon that I preached over 10 years ago and how it spoke to him. Uh, Paul is from Key West, and actually he, he's a snowbird. He's originally from Virginia. And Paul sends me a message at 4 in the morning, and I was up. And I was uh, reading this message about the sermon that I don't remember giving and these words that I don't remember saying. But the words were so beautiful and, and the message was so nice that I said, this is what I need to share with you this morning. The words which comforted Paul come from 2 Chronicles 20.15. And I'm going to preach from 2 Chronicles so 20 if you want to keep that open. 2 Chronicles 20.15 say this, do not be afraid or discouraged because of, his great, because of this great army. Because the battle is not yours, but God's. What comforting words for me. And I bet those are comforting words for you as well. This battle that we're in right now, and it's a battle. God will intervene and we will be okay. God has not forgotten us, nor is God punishing us, as some believe. We just have to do our part. Stay home, wash your hands, avoid crowds. I have to trust. I have to have faith that God will intervene and be with us. Faith is not a blind step into darkness, but rather a step into the light of God. And so we need to trust and have faith in God that we will get through this. In 2 Corinthians 20, God was speaking through a prophet probably to ease the people's worry because the people of Judah were afraid. They were about to be invaded, the Bible says, about to be invaded by a large army and their king. His name was Jehoshaphat, right? The, the king and the people were worried because they were about to be killed. They were about to be invaded and they were going to lose everything. And so they were in fear. Something interesting about fear. Often we believe that fear is a bad thing. But it really isn't, not always. You see, fear leads us to correct action. Fear causes us to run away when we're in danger. Fear protects us. It works with our instincts to protect us. 
Because of fear, I, I, I am almost certain that many of you are home and you're following the CDC guidelines of washing your hands and staying away from crowds and keeping social distance and staying quarantined. Because of fear, we want to protect ourselves because we're scared. If we weren't scared, if we didn't have this kind of fear, we'd be out there, right? But we, because of fear, we're scared. Also, fear does something else. It reminds us what's important, doesn't it? It reminds us what's important in our lives and what should be our priorities. Family and faith and health and basic food and friends and shelter. All the things that really matter. You know, there were so many things I was consumed over a month ago. There were so many things that I was worried about and, and, and things that I look back today and they really don't matter. They really don't. So I want to apologize to God for even lifting up some of those concerns. Because in light of what's going on today, they were just very minor. It has taken fear to remind me to stop putting man-made barriers in my life. Fear has even led Republicans and Democrats to agree, which is amazing. You know, and fear has another thing. Fear and har hardship and tragedy take us to our knees. Take us back to God. I pray more. I read my Bible more. And I think about God more now than I have in a long, long time. Christians are coming together, regardless of our differences, to pray. Just the other day, I think it was Wednesday, the Pope had asked all the Catholics around the world that at noon they should stop whatever they were doing and pray the Lord's Prayer. Well, the Methodist bishops got together and sent out a message to all the Methodists around the world that on that Wednesday to stop and pray. And so we joined them in prayer. I've been praying more now than I have in a long, time, long, long time. Lord, I am sorry that I have to face hardship to bring me back to my knees. Lord, I am sorry that I have to face hardship to bring me back to your word, to bring me back to worshiping you, to bring me back to loving all your people even the ones that don't look like me or act like me or believe what I believe. And that kind of fear is exactly what was happening at the time of King Josephat in Second Chronicles 20. In all, in all intents and purposes, Josephat, the Bible tells us, was a good man. Verse 32 actually says this, he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. That's a great thing that somebody would say to describe somebody, isn't it? He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. What is interesting is that he was not perfect, though. Sometimes he followed his own instincts and did not even seek God's guidance. Some of those decisions got him in trouble, actually almost got him killed. He associated himself with, with the wrong type of people. He did things without seeking God's guidance. And in the middle of that mess, he got, you know, he got into trouble and in the middle of his trouble he would often repent and the fear would cause him to turn back to God the day before this vast army in 2nd Chronicles 20 is about to invade them and the people are scared they're in fear King Josephat gathered all the people the whole nation and he said to them now let us fast and let us pray together and the prayer was very interesting in his prayer, and you can find it in, in starting in verse 5, in his prayer, he committed the situation to God, acknowledging that only God could save them. No one else. In his prayer, he sought God's favor because the people were God's people. He acknowledged God's authority and control over the current situation. In his prayer, he praised God's glory and took comfort in his promise. In his prayer, he professed complete dependence of God, not, for him, not of himself. And he was the king, but of God. So 2 Chronicles 20, starting in verse 15, says this. All the men of Judah, with their wives and their children and their little ones, stood there before the Lord. 
Then the Spirit of the Lord came on Jehazel. Which, by the way, when the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord, that means he was a prophet. And the Spirit of the Lord came on Jehaziel, and as he stood in the assembly, he said, Listen, King Josaphat, and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord God says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. So I'm here to remind you, Kendall Church, and all our friends that are listening, this battle is not yours alone. It's not yours, but God's. Let's pray that God will use our brave first responders, our nurses, our doctors, our scientists, to heal and to find a cure. God will be with you, and God will guide you during this time. What's amazing about this story is that after the people prayed and they worshipped, they went to bed, and in the morning, the king had asked the people to praise God and rejoice even before their enemies were defeated. Even before they knew they were going to be safe. The king said, listen, let us praise God now and thank God for what he's about to do. And so they sang a song to God, right? They sang a song of thanks. Now, before I tell you what that song was, I have another God moment this week. So as I was um, struggling with what to preach, and God puts this verse, 2 Chronicles 2015, back in my life, I was between my, uh, my, fir- my, I guess, my fourth Zoom meeting. And I'm watching the internet, and I was on social media, and I saw a post from a pastor friend of mine who was reaching out to his church, and I think it was Wednesday, and he, and he asked his church to be in prayer and to pray from Psalm 136. And he asked them to pray that psalm together. So I decided to join them. And as I read Psalm 136, I realized that's a beautiful psalm. That's a great psalm to give to our church. And this is a psalm that our Jewish brothers and sisters uh, read during uh, Rosh Hashanah and during Passover. And actually in this psalm, 26 times uh, the the words, His love endures forever is repeated. 26 times. What a beautiful reminder that no matter what we're going through, His love endures forever. Psalm 136, verse 1 says this, Give thanks to the Lord our God, for His love endures forever. So I got a problem. God's been speaking to me, maybe speaking too much. I'm like, God, one, one, one verse at a time. Right? I'm going to save the other verse for, for next week, maybe. Because I got two passages. I got first, uh, 2 Chronicles 20 and Psalm 136. So I started to do a little research, and I was amazed. In 2 Chronicles 20, the story, again, the people wake up. King Jehoshaphat is leading the people in the morning worship. And before they even know their enemy was defeated, he says to them, now let's sing a song to God of praise. This is what it says. 2 Chronicles, starting in verse 20. So it's chapter 20, verse 20. Early in the morning, they left for the desert of Tekoa. As they set out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Listen to me, Judah and people of Jerusalem. Have faith in the Lord your God, and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets, and you will be successful. After consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness. And they went out at the, at the head of the army saying and singing, Give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. I was amazed that God was putting these two verses in my life to share with you and how they were connected. You see, we learn as they were praising God, if you keep reading, God was defeating their enemies. Today, we're facing many challenges, and we need to turn to God in prayer. And again, I love how the Pope got us all praying. I love how people from other churches are texting me to ask our church to join them in prayer. Suzanne, I heard you. I I love how Many of you have been texting me, asking me to join in prayer chains. 
Karen, I heard you. But we need to remember this battle is not ours. That doesn't mean we don't make sure we protect ourselves. But we are reassured that God will fight for us. So let us worship God and thank God ahead of time even before defeating this virus. Let us claim victory, victory in Jesus, because things will get better and we will defeat the virus. God will take care of the virus. And let us remember when things get back to normal, right, when we go back to our old normal, to always turn to God, even when we're not scared. In closing, I'd like to read Psalm 136 with you. And as I read the first part, you will say his love endures forever. Now, I'm going to stop in, in verse 9, and then I have a few more verses I wrote on my own. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His love endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders. His love endures forever. Who by his understanding made the heavens. His love endures forever. Who, speared out, who spread out the earth upon the waters. His love endures forever. Who made the great lights. His love endures forever. Who made the sun to govern the day. His love endures forever. Who made the moon and the stars to govern the night. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord our God, for he will get us through this. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord for his doctors and nurses. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord for the first responders. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord for grocery store workers and truck drivers. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord for pharmacists and scientists. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord for all the people that must work to take care of the rest of us. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord for the volunteers, for our government leaders. His love endures forever. And give thanks to the Lord our God for the cure. His love endures forever. Let us pray. Wonderful and loving God, we turn to you this morning, praising you and thanking you for the miracles that you will, uh, you will create. I pray for all that are sick, for the people that have passed. Just one, just losing one person in this, in this virus is bad enough. So we praise for all the states that are, that are struggling, for all the families, for all the different names that I keep receiving on my phone, the people that are sick and hurt. We lift up each and every one of them. In Jesus' holy name, amen.